Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Klein. I'm the director of P20 Initiatives at Northern Illinois University, and we're excited to be back with you for another episode of Career Pathways Virtual Trailheads. Uh, I've got our host today and our guest. I'm going to turn things over to Jamoke to uh, run us through the rest of today's episode. Hello everyone, my name is Ade Jimaki Olokpade. I am an international graduate student here at Northern Illinois University where I'm studying public health and I'm really excited to be part of this initiative. Um, I'm going to have Cora introduce herself briefly before I go on to the questions for today. All right, thank you guys. Um, my name is Cora Polly. I am an electrical engineer um, project manager at HPK Engineering um, and I I mainly do utility design work. Sounds good. Thank you for that, Cora. I'm super tempted to ask you before I go into the questions I had already planned. Um, how did you or how does it feel to be a woman in the STEM field? I, that's a really good question. Yeah, there are not many of us and um, it, that's definitely a very cool uh, different part of my job, I would say. It is a typical uh, predominantly male uh, Male field. Um, so similar in school, there is mostly mostly guys as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's very exciting to be in a field that um, I'm a minority in and can still excel in. I guess and that sounds amazing. Um, yeah. So how did you how did you work while in school and now that you work? How did you manage being like a minority in a class full of guys? You know. Yeah, I actually was uh, was pretty lucky. I um, my first year of school, I became uh, good friends with someone that was just like lived in my dorm hallway or whatever. And then um, she ended up being in the same major as me and we kind of stuck together the whole rest of college and <laughs> scheduled all our classes together. Um, not that I couldn't have done it being the only girl, but it definitely helped having like a friend in general that was also uh, a woman to like kind of uh, stick with throughout throughout school um, and then in my career it really hasn't been that big of a deal I would say um, it was a little intimidating at first I think maybe just being um, being a beginner in the field in general um, not only just a woman um, but as you get more comfortable and more experience I think um, it's it's less intimidating and was um, was e easier. You realize people, everyone's nice out there for the most part. You know, you always have a difficult person here or there, but um, there's plenty of people that helped me along the way and it really wasn't that big of a deal or, or that intimidating once I got into it. So, you know, I can completely relate to that. While I was in college, I had this best friend who was in agricultural engineering. Yeah, that was what she majored in. And there was just four girls in our class. And so our first class, I remember she begged me to go with her because she was Wondering what it would be like being the only girl, and so, yeah, I mean, she she survived and she graduated. She spent five years in the program, but I know how I know how challenging it was for her. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, at this point, I'd like you to please tell us a little bit about the job you do and the organization you work with. Uh, sure. So um, my company is called HPK Engineering. We are um, a consulting utility engineering firm. So we work in. Um, the power sector, gas, telecom, water. Um, me specifically, I'm in the power sector um, of our company. Um, so my main job, I guess, or my, my main projects that I work on are with ComEd, which is the electric utility here in Chicago. Um, so we work on distribution designs for ComEd. So we are um, an engineer of choice for them, which is uh, EOC, they call it. Um, so we are one of what, three engineering firms that they consider their like top top three contractors to contract out that engineering work um, that that they don't have uh, time for. So that must that must be really fulfilling. So just out of curiosity, um, you did mention that your organization is involved in a lot of different sectors. So I'm just wondering, do you guys have rotations? Do you work with strictly the power sector, or do you have to do a bit of power sector this week and a little bit of gas the next week? Oh uh, yeah, that's a really good question for me. Um, since I'm an electrical engineer, I, I, I kind of stay within that power group. Um, okay. All those projects are, are more related to like my background, um, but I would say there are um, some of our civil engineers that would kind of dive into different groups because that's um, civil engineering is more work done like under the ground, so that could be there could be underground power 
uh, that they work on or or water or gas and things like that. Um, so yeah, me specifically, I stick, stick with the power stuff, but there are others who get to kind of bounce around more. Awesome. Can, can I can I yeah. jump in with a quick question about the projects you do, about what kind of design work you do? So, you know, I, I live um, just a few houses away from, from big power lines that transverse like the suburbs and um, especially when I'm riding when I'm riding my bike, I can I can see wh where those power lines go from for miles in every direction, and and by miles I mean tens of miles in every direction. And then I'm also partially as a result of the bike riding experience, I see these power substations all over the place. And then of course you know somehow power gets into into each of our buildings, right? Into a school, into our homes, into apartment buildings, other businesses. What what elements of design, like which of the stages, and, and we've had a nuclear power plant engineer on our series as well. So, you, you know, there's that end of the power generation too and, and how you get power from the nuclear power plant out to the rest of the grid. Where does your work tend to fall along that, um, that whole spectrum of power travel? That's, that's a really good question. And that's um, one of the cool things that I didn't even understand fully before even going to school for engineering, um, just how that power gets to your home or your business. Um, so I'm on the distribution side. Um, if I were to explain it super, super quickly, uh, the power would, would be generated and then travel along those big transmission lines that you mentioned that are typically along like bike paths or highways. Um, those are those big steel structures that you would see. Um, so that's very high voltages that travel along those transmission lines um, to substations. Um, and there the voltage is transformed down to distribution level voltages, which is my space. Um, and so those would be what you would see like the wood, smaller wooden poles you would see in alleys or along, along, along the sides of the roads. Um, there's also underground as well. Um, so that distribution space basically from the substation to the transformers that bring power into your, your home is kind of my area. Um, so that's 34 kV and 12 kV. Um, that, those are the voltages I work with. Um, and then projects, it could be anywhere from new business and new business coming in and we have to figure out how to get them the power that they need. Um, system improvement. So there's a lot of like smart switches that go in with like radios so we can talk to each other and automatically switch things on or off with, during power outages and stuff like that. Um, grid, res grid resiliency, so st um, strengthening the system if there's storms and things like that. Um, so all kind of things to improve um, upon the electrical system. Cool, thanks, that that's sense? really interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great answer. Okay. So I know with the pandemic, yeah, a lot of jobs have been um, impacted but positively and negatively for some people, you know, some people enjoy working from home. So my question is, how is this, how's the pandemic, how's that influenced or has that, um, well, has that influenced your job or the working style you have at your organization? Uh, sure, yeah, we've, I've actually been, been super fortunate. I know a lot of people have lost their jobs throughout all this and the utility um, industry is, is not going anywhere. Um, so fortunately for us, we've all, we've all had jobs. We're actually hiring like crazy right now. So um, people still need, need their power and um, that keeps me working. Um, as far as my day to day though, yeah, we are all working from home now. Um, at first it was a little bit of a transition, but um, I have gotten used to it and enjoy it now. I, I sort of miss being in the office sometimes, just like joking around with people and being face to face. Um, but yeah, we've we've been able to adjust pretty well and um, work together through through teams like this or screen sharing and make it make it work with what we have. So um, yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job of of adjusting. To be honest, I think everybody has had to do a good job with adjusting because I personally would never sign up for an online class. You know, I just I just couldn't stand them. I just felt like I want to be in class, you know, talk to my classmates and interact with everybody. But I've, I've pretty much had to adjust to that because that's the only option we have. And I've been doing really good at it. So I say, I say we've all had to adjust at some point. Um, you mentioned employing. You guys have been employing like crazy, you know, because of the pandemic. So if you were to employ somebody who was, say, fresh out of um, college, what qualities or what skills would you be looking for in this person? I'm um, sure. So 
so coming right out of school, we're, we, we don't really expect anybody to kind of know anything, really. I mean, you have those basic, um, the basics that you learned in school, but pretty much everything that we do for our job now, you're going to learn on the job. So we typically just kind of look for for people that are going to fit like our culture and and that we think we would work well with. Um, I would say skills to have um, would be like good problem solving skills, um, having like a questioning attitude. Um, I'm always a little concerned when new newer people have no questions. Um, you know, it's something that we've never done before. Like you should have a lot of questions. Um, and then communication skills, we do have to work with clients or contractors, like people, the construction guys in the field sometimes will call you with questions. So, um, so we look for people who who can communicate well with others um, on our team and like external team. Um, so yeah, just just if we get get like a good feel for you, if you think you're gonna fit in and and work well with the team. How how would you describe the culture of your of your workplace environment? Um, I I would say it's it's pretty laid back. I guess I don't know if that's the best word. Um, but I have I have worked worked at other places where it was a little more like serious and, and things like that. We do have a lot of a big younger um, group of people. Um, we do a lot of like fun events, um, social stuff, as well as, you know, working hard at actual uh, projects. Um, so yeah, I, I would say we're, we're, we're fun, but we're also very, very, very hardworking at the same time. Um, I want to know, how do you think the culture of your organization has improved productivity for like members of staff? Um, yeah, that, that definitely is a big thing that, that keeps me at, at my job. Um, I mean, I like, I like the work that I do as far as the engineering side of it, but the people that I work with are a big reason of like why I stick around too. Um, I think it really helps to have people that you like and respect um, that you have to work with and every single day. I, I completely agree with you. I was just saying to JC, I think last week, I was telling me how important work-life balance is to me and whatever organization at end of it has to be really big on work-life balance. So I'm, I'm glad your organization um, puts that into consideration. Um, so my next question to you would be, what do you enjoy most about your job? Um, I would say just the, just the whole idea of, of being able to understand how how power gets to your house and then like everything that that goes into making those projects happen. Um, so there's a lot of I, I guess you could say behind, behind the scenes type of stuff that that we do that maybe not everyone's aware of. Um, so so understanding how that power gets to you in the first place and then also um, as far as the projects go. Um, there's like pre-design work that we do. We will go look at stuff out in the field and then we'll, we'll take take that information back do the design um, from the office. And then there's a lot of like permitting things that are involved in real estate. Um, we have to make sure we have the rights to be where we are to do certain types of work um, and stuff like that. So I guess, yeah, just in general, understanding how that, that whole process works from like start to finish is really so important. In a normal five day week, how often are you out in the field looking at sites and how often are you at, well and then uh, is there are those the two places you are in the field and and then working in the office previously at home right now, et cetera, on what you've learned from the site and doing the design work? Like are those your yeah. two main settings and how often are you in the field? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, it's um those are the two main settings and it depends on the project. I would say maybe like once a week at the most in the field and the rest is um, in the office. It sort of depends on how big the project is. Um, if you have a bunch of smaller projects, you'd, you're going to have to be out there more. Um, a longer, bigger project, maybe you're going out there at the beginning of the design, take a couple months and design it, and then go back out at the end. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of maybe 20% in field. What and and what's the the most interesting? You don't have to be specific if you know we're not asking you to disclose a client or anything. But maybe the most interesting setting in the field you've been in or experience you've had in the field, because um, that's a lot different than being in the office all the time. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I, it might be exciting to me, but like I think going into substations is really cool and seeing all of the different electrical equipment and how all of that works. Um, and then a lot of the locations in, in the city can be really interesting. Um, you know, if you're out in the cornfields, it's kind of just like a pole or along the side of the road. It's fine too, but um, in the city, there's a lot more challenges as far as being in an alley, there's a piece of equipment on every single pole and like figuring out how you're going to fit in this new thing that you need to do and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. And 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 so in that kind of work, I'd imagine you've also had some projects where you had to work around some some stuff that's been there for a long time and that that might present some challenges or, or maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. We uh, we also have to do some underground stuff. I haven't done this for a while, actually, but um, we'll have to get into manholes and look at all of all of the underground cable um, and that, like you said, a lot of old stuff. So you're dealing with like lead cable, um, mm -hmm. trying to get rid of, but you have to be really careful and just don't touch anything and make sure you're like up to date with all of your like safety classes and stuff like that. Um, so that's maybe um, not the most glamorous um, thing I could be doing out in the field is dirty and um, wet usually, but I think still kind of cool to see see that kind of stuff too. That's awesome. Okay, um, so while you guys were talking, something that popped into my head is you clearly enjoyed what you do, yeah? And I'm just curious, when did you, at what point did you realize this is what I want to do? Well, what shaped your interest? What are the things that actually contributed to you deciding, hey, I do want to be an electrical engineer, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in um, like back in high school when I was trying to decide what to go to college for, um, I think I was just always good at math and science. And I had an advisor who was actually also my swim coach that was like, you should do engineering. And I was like, OK, I'll try it. Um, so I kind of just listened to him. I really respected him and maybe was a little scared of him too. But um, I was like, okay, I'll try this. And then I just stuck with it. And then honestly, through through college, I didn't always love all my classes. Was, There's a lot of um, more like electronics types engineering that we learned in school that mm -hmm. I wasn't that into. Um, and then I ended up being through like an internship that I got in college that was doing more of this like power design and AutoCAD drawings. And I was like, oh, OK, I, I like this, you know, and that kind of made me realize like I'm OK with sticking with with this thing in school and I'm going to like like the job I get. Um, and so, yeah, I did more like building design type stuff before my, my current job um, and then switched into utilities, which I've been really enjoying. Sounds awesome. So I'd say that, I mean, to perhaps be successful in this kind of um, career, you probably need to be good with numbers. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah, I would say so. De definitely for school to get through that. Um, a lot of once once you get to your job, there's a lot of like cal calculators we can use or tools, I guess. Um, so we're not like sitting here by hand doing math <laughs> or anything for my job, but you do you do need to understand the the background, the basics of of those engineering like things you learned in school to kind of like pick things up, I guess, quicker at your job. Mm -hmm. So you know, I was thinking before we got on this call. Um, growing up, I mean, I'm from a part of the world where there's still a lot of gender roles and things like that. And so while I was growing up, my dad. Well, I've got two brothers and one sister. I remember my dad bought my brothers two bicycles and bought my sister and I jump ropes, right? Mm -hmm. And and that just made me think, what if my dad bought me a bicycle? Do you think someday perhaps my bicycle would have stopped working? And I'd have been curious to see, hey, why is my bicycle not working? And that might have sparked an interest in mechanical engineering or some kind of engineering, you know? And so it's making me like think right now, what would you say to, I mean, I am hoping that there'll be parents out there who would be watching this, what would you say to parents like my parents um, about encouraging their kids or like the female kids to, you know, just basically giving them the same opportunities? You know, what, what do you think about situations like that? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's really important right now. Like the STEM fields in general are are tough to get any kid interested in and the girls. Um, but if you, I guess, notice that that your kid is at all interested in how things work or or how to figure something out, you know, like a puzzle or or things like that, like they have they have those um, those skills already. And mm -hmm. to 
I guess, try to make it fun, you know, to keep to keep kids interested in it um, and talk to people like me or whoever, if 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 we could at, at all, like excite people with that, because that's that's the first thing I think, just getting them that first step, like excited about it and involved and then to stick with it. Thank you so much for sharing that. My last question to you would be, how do you think your job as a engineer makes the world a better place? This is a very tricky one, and we just ask everybody we have on the show. Yeah, I uh, I think like I mean, getting people electricity is is needed. It's a necessity now, right? Um, it's not even. I guess it's making the world better, but I mean, if, if we don't have it, it's, it's not. We're not going to get through get through our days anymore. Um, so yeah, I think making those improvements on on those electrical systems that we all need um, is is super important and. Um, yeah, it has a, a big positive impact, I would say, on, on the world. You know, I completely agree with you because I'm from Nigeria, by the way, and uh, it's pretty embarrassing to say, but so far we don't have constant electricity. Like we don't have two for seven electricity. And I'm just thinking if we supported more girls to get involved in STEM and more younger people to get involved in STEM, maybe these younger generations would actually be dedicated to their work and get us out of this phase that we're in and into like, you know, where there's constant electricity. So yes, I do agree that your job as an electrical engineer, especially in places without um, constant electricity, goes a long way in making the world a better place. So thank you so much, Cora, for doing this with us. Um, Jason, that's all the questions I had for Cora. If you have anything, please. No, this was, this was awesome. It is incredibly important. I mean, certainly, uh, we wouldn't function in this home right now without electricity. We have two high school students as we're recording this in class using electricity. I'm using electricity and um, and obviously there's a lot of challenges for us with making sure that we're uh, doing it moving forward in a way that conserves our resources and uh, takes advantage of renewable resources as well. So um, to your point earlier, I think that for students watching this, there is going to continue to be an enormous amount of opportunity to engage in, in lucrative, well-paying jobs that are fun and interesting, as you've described, and, and that can make the world a better place. And so, um, so thank you for not only being with us today, but for what you're doing every day and for sharing with us today. We really appreciate it. Yes. No problem. Thank you. You hit, you hit it spot on there. So. <laughs> thank you so uh, for, much. Thank you. For those of you watching, uh, please connect with us on Twitter if you have ideas for guests for our show uh, or careers that you would like to see featured that you have questions about. You can connect with us at P20, P20 Network on Twitter or on our website, p20network.niu.edu. And thank you so much. We'll be back with more episodes.